This is what we are. We are all I am. Cool. Uh, thanks for having us, guys. It's, um, it's actually only my second time coming to, uh, to Barcelona. Um, but it's been beautiful. We've had a chance to be here all morning and hear some of the speeches. And yeah, it's been really cool. It's really informal, which is great. I think both Colin and I really loved it. So yeah, thanks for having us. Um, I should introduce a little bit about who we are, I guess, would be good. Um, give me one second while I does something. Cool. So I'm representing Moving Brands, uh, an independent uh, design agency in, in London, San Francisco, New York, uh, and Zurich. Um, my machine wants to do something, which is good. That's a bit worrying. There you go. It's done, some, <laughs> it's done something, at least. Um, and we've been working with uh, BBC UXD team, so user experience and design team, for the last two and a half years. And Colin and I have been collaborating, and we thought we'd uh, give a little bit of a share about the work and what we've done, but also the ways of working as well. So a little bit of who we are then. Um, I'm Darren Bowles. I'm Executive Creative Director. And I'm Colin Burns. I'm the Chief Design Officer for the BBC Digital. And a, a little bit so for today, if there's anything, complaints, complaints about any tech that we're about to demo that really should work, but is absolutely probably not going to, uh, then any of these... Maybe less so on Colin, because the poor guy has been dragged into it a little bit more. So um, maybe complaints to me and moving brands on that one. Um, we've also put these up as well. So there's a, there's a reason why the second hashtag is on there. So if you've got any questions through this, uh, through this talk, then please tweet them to us. There might be something. There may be something of technology that will work at the end. I can't promise anything. But if it does, that's where we're going to get them. Otherwise, we'll do hands, because that's really easy. One of the things that we wanted to talk about was that um, I, I work for a very large organization that, that buys a lot of creative services, and it's really hard. It's really hard buying creativity, especially if you're doing it at scale under EU regulations. And so one of the things that we want to talk about today is how we've tried really hard to sort of make that process be far less complex and, and a lot simpler, for not just for the agencies we work with, but for, for our team as well. Yeah. So in the, in, the, in the sake of collaboration, there's a few things that you might have heard along the time. So some received wisdom you might have had of bosses, agencies you've been at, your friends, whatever it might have been. And uh, we're going to run through some of, those, um, some of those parts now. So I'm the creative partner, uh, Colin being the client partner. So keep your distance. Don't get tainted. You probably heard that. There you go. Don't get too close to your agency. Keep them at arm's length. Make sure that they don't find out really that much about you. We should add, don't let your agency try out some new tech uh, whilst doing a conference untested. Another one, so us, you've got a creative idea, you've got a concept that you keep and you keep and you value and you hold that precious. And that for us, they're just all money-grabbing bastards and all they want is to make, <laughs> take all of our money and you know, not give us anything in return. Exactly, no transactions, no transactions. Um, it's about strong egos, you know, make sure you're as big, you're as present, you've got as much character as you can, you know, that's how it's going to push it on through and the great ideas. And that I've got a bunch of stakeholders <laughs> that have got even stronger egos. Um, protect yourself to protect your work. You know? So we're always looking after your people, look after your environment, look after your ideas. You know, that's the only way to get the work really through. And of course, we've got tons of knowledge that if that agency gets hold of it, then that's really going to damage our business. Um, sticking to your guns. Brilliant idea. You know, the client's an idiot. If they can't see it's a good idea, you just keep on forcing it home. Force it home. You know, up the argument. Keep on pushing it. You know, that's really important in collaboration. Never take their first idea because that's the one they're trying to force on you because that's going to be cheaper for them in the long run. All of this, of course, is pish. Now, for the, for the non-Scots and non-Celts in the room, this basically means rubbish or stronger to that effect. I should say that this word only meets one of these organisations' editorial policy standards. Yeah. I'm allowed to say it. He can't. Um, so collaboration needn't be complex for great design to emerge. You know, we make complexity sometimes, the, the relationships, the types of characters you might be. It really needn't be to be so complex. So the kind of things that we value, and, and when we say we value, it's the partners. And it, it is a partnership, and that's how really it needs to work. So let's see if this actually works then. So all the things that we value. Ah! Cool. 
So curious. You have no idea how happy that makes us. <laughs> We're always going to work. It's always going to work. Don't worry. Don't worry. So curious. What we really enjoyed about the BBC uh, and the team and the, the people that Colin represents um, is that despite the, the work that we work on, there's always this kind of drive, this want to achieve, this want to kind of find something. And design can be quite a dirty process. You go through lots of various things. You don't have a solid outcome. But one of the projects we worked on with, uh, with Colin and the team was um, an idea for my BBC. So for those that aren't in the UK, haven't used the BBC, amazing products, individual products, but perhaps not a, a high profile piece for you as an individual, your profile, your logo, and your personalization of the BBC. And the individual teams together, we had a workshop as Moving Brands and UXD team and the product owners from, um, from BBC, across BBC, to draw together. So it's fair to say that perhaps some of these products haven't worked closely. I'm using that. That's what, I can say that, say that Darren, yes. Cool, I can say that. Right, they haven't been close together, but we brought them together in a workshop scenario to try to um, objectively look at each other's product and maybe try to take a little bit of a walk about what would be beneficial to each product. Um, trying to understand this would be a, real, a really great opportunity for a user. So if it's great for a user, what can I do for you? What can I do for your product, et cetera? Which was unexpected. Yeah, and I think it's fair to say that that, that, that sort of process that, that, that these guys ran with us um, kind of unpacked a sort of lot of latent curiosity in the, the news team often are rarely working with the iPlayer team or the sport team. And so that, that curiosity, um, that, that, that's persisted um, in, 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 our, in our division in a way that's been really interesting. Yeah, so we had a chance to, it was very much a kind of a paper prototyping workshop, trying to get some ideas down. We were able to take those away, make some really quick uh, prototypes together, try to prove in some of these ideas. Now, not, none of these things are actually live at the moment, but there's a little bit of a video that gives you an idea. Let's go for two in a row. Huh? Yeah, two in a row. Come on, Colin. Yeah. Yes. So the reason that any large organization wants to work with external creatives is that they bring a level of craft to us that, that we either can't have because it's too specialized or you know, we, we can learn from their experiences with, with, with other uh, clients. And I think that one of the things that moving brands um, have brought to us that's really distinctive is their, their, their craft with motion, with animation, how we can sort of pull that um, in, into um, our, our toolkit uh, to, to literally activate our brands online. And uh, this next piece of work is something that we did as part of an exploration of how we could make um, our video on demand service, which is called iPlayer, how we could sort of build a slightly broader brand kit, if you like, of, of, of assets. And they brought huge craft to this. Um, they were also very crafty um, in that what they've done, what, what moving brands have done is, is essentially give us, given us a, a tool, a program that allows us to generate an infinite number of, of, of textured background assets. Now, that might seem like a crazy thing for an agency to do because essentially they're, they're, sort of, they're, 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 they're cutting off their revenue stream in a way and that might seem like a, sort of a mad thing to do. But the cleverness, the craftiness of it is that actually we're now using their tool and, and we're, we're kind of even closely, more, more closely bound into to what these guys can do for us. This has been a really sort of interesting piece of work for us. Yeah, cool. So we've got, um, we can give you an example. So Toby, actually, who's going to be very quiet and very modest, is in the corner. And if you're going to be around on Sunday for the workshop, please come along. The guys are brilliant, the R&D guys, so you must come and meet them. Um, but here's an example of, of, of the tool in itself. So you're using lumens from content, so actually image content from, from iPlayer itself. 
Um, so pulling the, the lumens, which gives you the effect of those kind of strands of hair and that kind of aurora borealis, as we've called it, of kind of texture. So it's, it's data-driven. The data in this input would be, of course, the content, the video itself, and the tool. In this example is a HTML example. Toby made the original in processing. But it's a way for us to have tools. If we've got new tools to make with, and it gives us new opportunities to work with Colin and bring something entirely different. So being able to have generative art is really cool and certainly drives us on as well. All right, I'm going to try the second one. We're on a roll, Darren. Uh, <laughs> what could go wrong? Um, so personable. These guys are amazing. Like bar none, I think we've we've probably worked with maybe um, 20, 30 people from from Colin's team or around Colin's team. Um, and each and every one of really strong characters, individually really good, really warm, can embrace people, can work with people. Um, but we really enjoyed the fact that they can they can talk, they can come into our environment. That's really important. You know, these sprints can be quite quick. So if they can't be in an environment, if you can't work together, it's not going to really build to any kind of momentum. Um, so the fact that they can work, they can be really honest, they're people, you know, like real people, not, not like client people, like they're nice. Um, <laughs> so it's been, re it's been really good. They come in, they'll make fun of us, they'll, you know, make fun of our clothes or, you know, have some cake in this example, which was good. So, yeah, it's made a big difference to us in how we can expose our team as well because, you know, as the earlier adage would be, protect your team. You know, we don't need to protect the team. Each of the guys get on really well. These guys never take advantage. They're always about trying to get the great work out, and we can let the guards down if you want, which is great. I think it's fair to say that also there's, there's a role for me and, and my leadership team to coach our staff to be that little bit more open when they're in an agency and essentially not act like a client, try and, try and really sort of work, work as, a, as a real collaborator. Yeah, and this is one of the great things. Uh, this is an agency day, so this isn't just us. This is um, other agencies on the roster, sort of the of the six um, agency that Colin has to work with. We're all drawn together um, with the product team as well, so we're able to have ideas and share, so we're able to swap the, perhaps the products that we're working on that time, have ideas, but you get a chance to work with more members of Colin's team, work on a different topic, work with other agencies, you know, which is really cool, and they, they all just, just happen to be really lovely, which is great, but it's, it shouldn't really be a surprise because the, the, the process of, that Colin had gone through, but we can mention that in a little bit as well. Okay. I think one of the things that lots of agencies sort of make, make the mistake of is thinking that it's all about really kind of hi-fi presentation and that you've got to come and see your client and give something that's really, really glossy. One of the things that we admire about, about moving brands um, has been their ability to, to work in a really sort of low-fi way. Um, that one of the things that, that these guys do is that they, they bring work very early um, and they also bring, bring it in a kind of interesting way that it's always printed out in A4 sheets and stuck in these massive sheets of foam core that they um, schlep across London to get into our offices and we use these as very kind of open pieces of, of, of uh, very open deliverables that, that, that encourage our stakeholders to actually get involved and make marks on, on, on the paper rather than it being something that's too glossy or, or too shiny a surface. So one of the things that it turns out, one of the things that's been interesting about the two and a half years of this um, roster that we've been running is that we never realised that the ability to carry heaps of foam core across London was a core skill that we should be looking for um, in terms of procuring these, these, these agencies. And so that's been a revelation for us. Yeah, it's been a revelation. We have now become the man with Volvo, so I've <laughs> middle-aged myself really early. But yeah, Volvo's a key to getting foam boards in the back of a car, apparently. So... Yeah, they don't fit in many things. Yeah, so these are just some of the workshops where we took the work in. Again, you know, very much kind of tear down sessions and being a bit more informal, you know, treating them like people, which is good. Okay, so I mentioned some characters. Um, here's one. Uh, this is David. He was on Colin's team, great guy. Uh, we got a chance to work on a, a really interesting project. So again, if you're not aware of the project, but um, BBC Three was a terrestrial TV channel, broadcast channel. Um, and as of this year, actually, as, as of the last two, two months, months ago, yeah. um, it's now no longer a terrestrial TV channel. It only exists digitally, so you can only find it online. So that's a big transition. So if you are producing content, and BBC made brilliant content for many, many years in quite traditional formats, you're moving into a new medium and exclusively to a medium. So you can't lose anything in that transaction because when you make that transition, the, the, the British public would be up in, up in you know, Ferrari if we haven't got something or something has been lost from that tra transaction on that, that crossover. So we had to work together with David, with, with the team, with the editorial as well, um, and those making content for BBC to try to imagine what a BBC3 could be like 
when that transition, and now it's happened, the transition's now live. But at that time, there wasn't an idea of what it could be. And so David had come with an idea of how we should approach it, what it should be, and it was going reasonably well, not really. <laughs> it, you know, we had failed, we had perhaps with the wrong t team and people together, we were struggling with what the content would be, trying, trying to struggle with the idea of it. And David likewise, you know, had, had pointed it out and we said, actually, you know what the problem here is? We never asked, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this kind of content? Why are we trying to force this idea? And he was like, you know, fair cop. You know, he's a really, really honest guy. Um, and he's like, yeah, cool, let's, let's sort it out. We shouldn't, have we shouldn't have projected this idea onto you. So being able to be really open, really accountable with one another, that we can say, we were both wrong in this. We're both going to turn this around and we're going to change another direction. Um, and this is... Um, this brought some really good interesting fruit, so the idea of a daily drop. So the way that people snack content, if, if you're viewing content digitally, you're not going to have 30 minutes, you're going to absorb the same content, you're going to find it in different ways. Um, so the idea of being able to digest a day's worth of content, and content could be, it could be tweets related, it could be small memes, it could be you know, small extracts from, from a 30 minute piece of content, not the full chapter. Um, so this daily drop might be a combination of all of those things in a single run and you get a chance to digest when you want to. So that was an idea that we had in, um, in one of the sessions. Uh, and again, we try to put this together as a prototype to try to bring it to life. And again, this isn't existent at the time, um, so trying to imagine what that journey would be from a user perspective, what they would get from it. And, and it, was quite, it was quite tense at times, you know, because from a, from a product perspective, they've been very used to having 30 minutes worth of content. So this was something entirely new. So it's almost, it's almost like a transitional format where it's a sort of programmatic view or to, to having sort of uh, lo lots of sort of um, short form content be being released on a daily basis. So we're almost sort of trying to find these formats together that would take a broadcast editorial team in, into the, the, this new domain. Yeah, so this would be like a countdown then to what you know, the next drop would be. So from, from an idea that we had had to, to it actually becoming live. So this is a really bad animation that I made last night. And Guy, Guy, who's one of the founders, is a brilliant animator. I made this in Photoshop, Guy, which is pretty awesome, right? Um, <laughs> Colin was watching me doing it. Um, so, but this is live. So we actually went out into the world, which is great. It's in beta, so this is the first stab at it. And as Colin said, you know, this is going to come on far more. But it's, it's, again, it's a, it's a point of proving something, giving an idea of it, and be able to take it on. But we wouldn't have had that kind of working experience if we hadn't been so open with each other. OK. So. One of the things, so the, the process that we went through, um, was, it's an open call for agencies um, from all around Europe, and we had over 210 agencies apply, and we went through a, um, a very sort of, a, sort of rigorous process against you know, a series of, sort of uh, measures of uh, creativity, um, quality, process, a whole sort of series of things that, that we measured, and got down to 20 agencies. We then ran a paid pitch where we gave 20 agencies some money to answer one question. Um, and as part of that process, we went to visit every single agency. Um, I think I've got a very strong view that you, know, you can't really get a sense of, of what it's going to be like to work with an agency through some kind of online portal or some kind of remote process or even just an interview. So we asked to spend about half a day um, in every agency studio to try and get a sense of the feel for what it's actually like. Um, and one of the things that emerged for us was that the agencies that, we, that, that seemed to be the most creative, the ones that we were drawn to, um, had a cer certain humility where um, there wasn't perhaps the sort of traditional kind of you know, superstar um, sort of signature designer um, at the head of the studio. We met a few agencies that were like that, and when we asked to do the tour of the studio, you could see all the sort of folks in the back, back, back office absolutely amazed that a client had walked through the door, um, and you could just sort of... So feel the dynamics between the, the, the folks that were really doing the work and the folks that were fronting up the work. I think one of the things that characterizes these guys' work is that, um, next slide, sorry, is that, that, you know, it's really hard to tell who's the number one at, 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 at moving brands, you know, that, that everyone's very much on a kind of, obviously, an even keel, and, um, you know, we, we, and that, that's a really, turned out to be a really important attribute for, for, for us, for what, what makes a, a great agency to work with. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been with the, the agency now for, for 10 years, but it's very much down to the founders, Kai, who, who hopefully some of you get a chance to meet on Sunday. You know, just the way that the founders have been about wanting to embrace, you know, m multiple skills, you know, people from different backgrounds in together, and that actually a piece of work is far better if you all share through, if you all in, inject in ideas, different perspectives, different skills, different tools. Um, so it's always been a kind of core creative collaborative environment. That's always been very important. So. You know, I feel lucky that we, we found a partner in BBC that would really appreciate that and that we can continue that together, but also that they, they work the same, which is cool. 
I'll try this one and see if this last one. Oh, I'm 100% Cole. Cool. Let's see what yours is. <laughs> so sleeves up. Um, yeah, these guys aren't um, that traditional kind of backroom clients. They, they won't be staying away from the work and expecting you guys to deliver, you know, so you get that kind of weird Wizard of Oz moment where the curtain comes back and, you know, somebody comes down and says, oh, yeah. they, these guys are right in there with you, you know, they want to get involved in the work, they're prepared to get involved in the work and, you know, we've had a chance to kind of witness how, how Colin um, works with his team, what they look for, and, and this is one example of, a, of an agency day, sorry, not an agency day, a, a team day where, actually, I'm calling to talk through some of these, where they're, they're drawn together to modulate, to create these kind of plasticine models, so feeling uncomfortable, again, in this kind of dirty design process to make something really interesting. So what, what we're trying to do here was, that, um, you know, we, we have a big estate. We, we have 10 key products, thousands of pages, tens of thousands of content objects at any one time. Um, and one of the problems that we've been facing, we, we don't, I don't have a big team, I've got 120 designers, which is quite a big team, but it ain't Google big. It's not, it's for, you know, for the amount of stuff we've got to do. And one of the things that we were trying to do was to um, get our design team to think about how much we should be reusing uh, uh, design patterns. Because um, I think that it's, it's, in, it's in every designer's kind of makeup to want to, to make something new from, from the start. If you're doing that, that sort of level, that, that, that sort of scale of, of operation, it's incredibly ineffective and essentially we don't have the resource anymore to be sort of rebuilding every product or every page from scratch. You have to reuse components. So what we did was we conceived of this day where um, we ran a sort of a half day workshop where uh, we put in put in small teams, four or five, the whole team put, were put into small teams and they were given a precinct in an imaginary plasticine city. And the first two rounds of building, we just let, let people build from bespoke plasticine. So they built these amazing objects, but it took them hours. And then we sort of realized, we said, well, guys, we've got to complete the whole city and we've only got another hour left. So what we did was we then made available to them a whole series of, of pre-configured components that they could then build from. And they were then able to sort of take that top 20% and make the top of the building special, but the rest was actually built using components. And it very effectively made that point about how this 80-20 blend of, of um, uh, reuse of patterns and then really focusing on the things that are going to make our products and experiences distinctive and being much more more self-conscious about that and did it in a way that was highly experiential where rather than me standing up and wagging my finger and saying thou shalt not do this anymore they actually sort of you know learned it or felt it in this kind of sleeves up way and I think the, the last one here is that one of the things that we love about um, moving brands is that they're into bondage <laughs> And you know, I think that you know, we, this sort of thing I'm talking about in terms of you know, taking pleasure from constraint, um, I think that you know, we, we keep saying to our agencies, we're doing this whole project, but you've got to use these 10 standard patterns. This is the bit we really want you to focus on. And I think that that can be quite off-putting. It can be, you know, that may not be motivating for, um, a, client, for a, a client who's working with agencies on a project-by-project -project basis. But I think one of the sort of fantastic things about having um, a, a sort of three, four-year relationship um, uh, in, a, in a formal roster means that you can actually sort of build up that kind of understanding and, and then actually contributing to our pattern library um, as, as much as just, just doing that. So that, that, that kind of bondage thing is really important for you, Darren, isn't it? Yeah, it is really important. I mean, like in life, you know, if, you, if, if one person comes out and tells the other person they're into bondage and the other one isn't, I mean, it's a bit awkward, right? So, so, so luckily we were able to kill that moment, which is good. And um, so one of the projects that brings that to life, this is um, Newsby. Um, so the competitive landscape is really complex, lots of characters, BuzzFeed, Metro, Huffington Post, you know, Vice, you know, people with really strong characters. And the BBC is a bit different in that case because it can't project um, a, a, a character, a point of view, it has to be factual. Um, so the brand for Newsbeat, which is a large majority of that entertainment content, it can't project a point of view on that, it needs to be factual. Content, factual point of view, real journalism, maybe coming from a side, coming slightly off the beat. Um, so we're creating a, a brand in Newsbeat, moving it on, um, but then also trying to find a personality. And the personality in this case was the behaviour, some of the interactions, some of the motions that were drawn and capable. So when we look at some of the bits here, so we've got colour scraping, we're able to pick from points, adjust images. We're using some of the rigidity of the cards format, but looking for behaviours and movements. And there's a moment coming up where when the cards themselves, you touch the corners, they react and they will move with real physics. So it's the little nuances, the little moments, give it a character and a personality, even though it's in perhaps a more rigid structure that the card format brings.
also had one of the best briefs ever for the project, which was it was looking quite old, very made for radio, probably made by, you know, or looking like it had been made by a dad dancing, as, uh, as Colin had called it. And he said, whatever you do, whatever you make, it can't look like dad dancing at a wedding. It's like, cool, no problem, we can do that. Um, but the, the, the parameters in this case were, yes, there is a rigidity to, to, to use in perhaps frameworks, but the 80-20 rule, as Colin had said earlier, if you're following something, it's the 20% you can add on top of it. It's the disguising, perhaps, of that framework. It's finding the moments and personalities, the little nuances, the little motions, the little behaviors. And that's where a lot of that beauty comes from. I think you can ignore that sometimes, you know, when you're following with real continuity. But we really love that, you know. It's, it's cool to have those things. It's cool to have those kind of structures in place. Let's see how we can push them. Let's see how we can test them. Let's see how we can find opportunities. Yeah, so this is just a little part of the prototype that we made on that. And this is live. You know, a lot of this, as we were told at the time, we can't make via technology. We're going to make a minimum viable product. You know, we're not going to be able to get those things in. But it didn't stop us from trying to make something that could happen. You know, so it might not happen this year, it'll happen next year. But once the development team had seen it at the BBC, they were like, this is cool. We've got enough time. Let's try and squeeze some of these things in. And they did. They made it work because we found ways of proving that it could and should work. Um, and they did it, which is great. Cool. Yeah. So things that we partners value, well, as a kind of a recap, so sleeves up, open, personable, curious. Crafty, lo-fi, humble, and bondage. And of course, the interesting thing is that it's actually not just about this side. So You can click this. Both so of them are the same. So actually, it turns out that these eight values are the things that when we run our next um, uh, roster procurement in 2017, we're probably going to try and have to figure some of these things into the way that we're actually trying to assess the agencies that are applying to work with us. Exactly. So there's a few kind of learnings and tears to the end. You can, these are transferable. These, these shouldn't be exclusive to one side. You are parked together. But how do you get a good collaboration? Well, egos, you've got to park them. You know, you've got to leave those parts of the front door. It's not going to be helpful in a process, you know, to leave them. Share like BFFs, you know, you're going to have to be like your best friends. You're going to row, you're going to argue, you're going to have to be honest at times. But that's what best friends can do. But you get past it, right? So, you know, share like BFFs. It really does help. Fast, cheap, good, pick two. You're not going to have all three. If you're really honest with each other, you can be honest with the client and honest with the agency. We're going to do these things. It was, it was Hugh Dubberley that used to run the Netscape design team that first showed me this. And I think it's such a simple way of just taking a bit of the pressure off on projects. And it's, when you think this through, um, most projects fall into the, 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 this kind of thing. And I think it's a really helpful thing. So yeah. I think moving brands in the BBC, we have pretty consciously got to a point where we're now unconsciously coupling and it's been a fantastic ride so far. That's us. Thank cool. you.